Hi folks, welcome to Retire Rich with Real Estate. I'm Paul Price. Today I'd like to talk to you about how to find a good tenant. You know, years ago when I got started in this business, to find a good tenant, I had to advertise in places like the newspaper and classified ads. And it was a different world because you had to submit an ad, you might have to wait a few days before it would run in the, the local paper, and then you would start getting calls. But nowadays, we can go in a matter of minutes and a few clicks on the computer, I can have an ad posted and within 30, 45 minutes start receiving calls and be showing the property this afternoon or maybe tomorrow. Uh, so the, the speed of things is much quicker nowadays, which is, which is good because time is money. And we all know every day that a property sits vacant is costing us money. So we want to fill these vacancies as quickly as possible but we also want to make sure we have quality tenants because without quality tenants we could cost ourselves a lot more money than just waiting for the right tenant to come along um, try not to get in too big of a hurry on these things because if you put someone in quickly just to get the property filled a lot of times you put a bad tenant in it can cost you hundreds maybe even thousands to get them out if you have to evict them so you want to avoid that at all costs. So I try to take my time, pick the right tenants, and how I do it nowadays is I use apps like Zillow and Craigslist and Truly, uh, things like that. There's many of them online, and most of them are free for the landlord to actually go in and post the ads. I start receiving calls or emails. I try to try to pre-screen a little bit, and the reason I do that is because you know. Uh, many times, you know, I used to just, you know, people would call me and I'd say, yeah, I can, you know, it's still available, yes, and when can I see it? And you just run out there and show it to them and you find that you waste your time a lot because you get out there and you find out either they don't make enough money or they've got pets and you don't allow pets or, you know, it's a three bedroom and they need a four bedroom. I mean, people just, they don't read the ads and they read so many ads they get them confused and by the time they call you, they don't know who they're which had they're responding to a lot of times. So I try to go back over things with them when I've got them on the phone especially and say, you know, hey, you know, you don't have any pets, do you? You know, because we don't allow pets and make sure that they're, you know, the answer is no there, I don't have any pets. Um, also things like, you know, the rent is X number of dollars, you know, here's how much the deposit is. You know, do you have all that together? Because, you know, you get people come in and they'll, and Here's another thing that happens quite frequently. People come over and they'll look at a property and then they'll tell you, oh yeah, I'm, I'm just looking right now, but I'm going to move, you know, three months from now. That does you no good because, you know, if you can't rent this apartment or house in three months, you've got bigger problems. You know, you're going to have this thing rented in a week or so. And so they're wasting your time because this property is not going to be available three months from now. And... So you need to find out when they plan on moving. Do they have the money to move? You know, do they have a job? You know, what kind of income they have? And I usually go as a rule of thumb that they make at least three times what the rent is. So if I'm renting something for, let's say, $600 a month, they need to be making at least $1,800 a month in income, or they can't afford to live there. And that's a pretty good rule of thumb that, that I found, um, you know, so, you, you have to know what those numbers are and you know what to, know the right questions to ask. But if you pre-screen people on the phone, you'll find that a lot of times you can weed out some of these people who are you know looking way too soon or they've got pets or they you know they they're just not the right fit for you. And then that saves you time from having to go out there and show the property and waste your time and their time both. And the other thing that I've learned over the years is to schedule appointments wisely. When you're getting calls, you know, I know when I was first starting out, I was nervous anytime I had a vacancy, and I wanted to have the property rented immediately because I had a mortgage to meet, and I had other obligations, and so I needed that cash flow to pay the mortgage and pay the insurance and the taxes, and so I was just in a panic mode when I, when I had a vacancy. Um, you know, now I, I, I'm in a much better position, and that's not even an issue at this point, but... I understand that being a new investor when you have a mortgage and you have other obligations you want that thing rented 
but don't let that cloud your judgment because you know uh, one thing I would do is I would, somebody would call and say yeah I can see the property right away and uh, I, I like to see it this afternoon and I would drop everything and run out to the property and in my case the property is about 20 minutes away um, so you know it would take me at least you know an hour to go out and show it and come back so so I'd waste an hour of time for somebody that maybe you know maybe a good tenant maybe not but if they're not then I've wasted an hour or they wouldn't show up or something like that so I found that the best thing that you can do is to to decide okay to you know if I've got a property for rent and let's say I've got a pre free schedule tomorrow afternoon uh, then somebody calls and they said hey I want to see the property I can see it this afternoon I said well I'm not free this afternoon but how about tomorrow afternoon and you know around four o'clock or something like that and they said yeah that works for me then the next person calls and you say hey you know if you'd like to see the property I'm going to be out there tomorrow around four you know if you'd like to see it around 415 or 430 or somewhere around that time I'd be glad to show it to you then most of the time that'll work most of the time people will, will work with you and if you tell them that's when you're available that's when they'll try to be there to see it if you can schedule two or three appointments around the same time I usually try to allow about 15 minutes in between them uh, if somebody doesn't show up which that happens quite often because you gotta remember these people that are calling you they're calling 10 other people you're not the only place they're calling on so if they call you know 10 other people to look at their places and they go look at a place and they find one they're not going to call you back and cancel they're just going to not come so that happens they find a place somewhere else or whatever or they just forget they made the appointment but what I find is if you make two or three and you go go out there to meet those people and you, you it may take you yeah another you know instead of an hour an hour you know there and back it may take you two hours but you've tied up you're not driving back and forth you're not wasting all that time and you meet two or three tenants now the, also the advantage to that is say say one of them doesn't you got three appointments one of them doesn't show up the other two show up but let's say both of them are are qualified they meet your minimum standards of qualifications now you've got two tenants and you've got to decide which one you like better which one has just a little bit better qualifications than the other that gives you a little bit better chance because if you go one at a time you go take that first tenant that comes along and he might just barely meet that bar and the next tenant right behind him might be a little bit better might be up might be a little bit above the minimum so if you hit them both at the same time you're going to take that one that's a little bit higher you know take that tenant uh, that's got a little bit more income maybe a little bit better credit history or whatever and that's going to help you um, so so it helps you in several ways it saves your time gives you a little bit better pull you know of, of prospects to pull from um, you know you've got a lot better um, chance to get a good tenant now once you get a tenant and they've looked at the property they like the property you feel like they're a good fit for you and they feel like the property is a good fit what do you do next well next I take an application uh, now the application we do charge for application we do charge an application fee uh, our fee is about $35 right now and what that does is that covers my cost to do a background check and I will have a company do a background check they'll pull your credit and they'll do a criminal check and they'll also do a evictions check those are all public record che checks and you know there's more to this stuff than you realize why that does give you good valuable information it doesn't give you everything and I can give you several stories <clears throat> for example um, the criminal part is only convictions uh, as well as you know evictions are only court ordered evictions so if a tenant you know if a landlord came to a tenant and said hey I need you to get out you're not paid your rent and they just leave and they don't go to court that's still technically an eviction but it didn't go through the court system so it's not recorded in the public record so so you need to make sure you're doing your due diligence and doing your own legwork on these things and what I do I start out by usually after I get the application I look over everything and everything looks pretty good I'll take their name and I'll google their name this will give you information usually like Facebook and LinkedIn and any other information that that they have out on the internet is going to pop up 
and you know you can kind of find out a little bit about the tenant you know what they're you know who their friends are and what what kind of things they like to do and things like that and you think well that doesn't really seem like that'd be important well you know you'd be surprised at what you'll find about people especially on Facebook and things like that and you may find out that they're into activities that may be illegal or things that you may not you know want to be going on in your properties um, and so and, that, and one interesting thing that happened once uh, is I found an application um, I had a previous landlord on there and it just so happened to match one of their Facebook friends and they were tagged in a bunch of pictures together and sure enough when I called that so-called landlord uh, which actually turned out to be their friend they couldn't answer basic questions like how much was the rent what was the address of the rental property what you know things that a landlord should know you know it's pretty easy to figure out you got a friend that's answering the phone you know uh, like George Costanza you know Vandalay Industries <laughs> it's kind of funny but but it, it, it does happen you do have things like that happen you do have people that will try to get their friends or their family to answer the phone and, and give them a good reference so you have to know what to ask and ask these questions that that only a landlord would pretty much know um, and so you need to you need to make sure that you're doing those kind of things uh, services you can get services that will supposedly check the rental history and do employment verifications and things like that my experience with those is they don't try very hard um, they do charge an extra fee to do that but most of the time you'll get it back and say oh we couldn't get in touch with the previous landlord or we couldn't verify this and but I still pay for it so I just decided I'm going to do that stuff on my own um, usually I try to go back at least two landlords uh, you know the first your current landlord if you talk to them if that landlord is having problems with that tenant they're not paying they're they're, they're they're tearing the place up they're, they're being disruptive maybe they're you know well for whatever reason they don't like the tenant and they want them out um, they may not be truthful or they may not be as forthcoming on the you know, bad aspects of that tenant so you can't always take what they say you know at full face value uh, most of the time they're going to be fairly honest with you but they still have a vested interest if they want rid of them to not say you know too much bad against them too much negative because then you won't rent to them and then they'll be still they'll be stuck with the tenant so so be a little leery of that if you can go back one layer you know go back to the previous landlord not their current landlord but the one they had before that they they have really no reason to lie to you in most cases and they're going to give you a more honest more forthcoming information about the tenant uh, you know how they really were how many times were they really late you know what's the real story on, the, on that tenant I always ask previous landlords would you rent to this tenant again that can tell you a whole lot about the tenant without them revealing uh, negative information or whatever if they say no I would not rent to them again um, you know you can read between the lines there I mean there's not you know if a tenant pays me on time and takes good care of the property and does all the things they're supposed to I'm gonna say yes I will rent to them anytime you know no problem if they're not doing what they're supposed to do and you just say no I wouldn't rent to them again that tells you right there you know that there's probably some bigger issues going on and they may not want to tell you um, so you know take that as advice you know that that's a good way to find out because some especially the apartment complexes they're not going to tell you a whole lot uh, there there's too much you know society is just way too litigious nowadays and people are going to sue you for everything so they don't want to say too much um, one thing with dealing with apartment complexes on trying to find a rental history that's another thing when you do an application at the bottom I always have them sign a, a release at the bottom that says you know hey this is all truthful information and I give this company permission to do a complete background check and for everyone to release information uh, regarding those you know inquiries so when they sign that I can 
send a copy of that to uh, to any apartment complex because mostly apartment complexes are going to say, hey, we need a release from the tenant. And I said, well, it's on my application. I'm going to send you a copy of that. And then when I send that to them, I usually fax it or email it to them. I also send a little questionnaire for them. And my questionnaire is going to have questions like, you know, you know, what was the rent? How many times were they late? You know, was there any complaints from the, you know, I've got a whole list of questions. They will usually take that, fill it out, and fax that back to you. Um, sometimes it's, you know, might take a day or so to do it. They're, they're not really fast a lot of times on the turnaround. But they will do it, and they will give you a, a pretty honest, most of the time, uh, response on what, what's going on there. If it's an individual landlord, most of the time your best bet to, to catch them on the phone, you know, talk to them. Uh, you'll get a little more, more information out of them that way. Um, and they're not going to ask for a request or anything. Usually they're just going to talk to you. But, you know, basically I've got four areas I'm looking at. Rental history, credit history, criminal history, and the the last one's kind of tied together. It's verifying, it, you know, employment and income. Those two kind of go together. Um, you know, you got to have a job and you got to have some, enough income to support yourself. So if you've got all that information and you find a tenant that meets all the criteria, they have the right income, they don't have any problems criminally, they don't have any they have a pretty decent credit record, then you can move forward to the next step and rent to your tenant. And hopefully you'll have a long-term relationship with that tenant. <music>